so you just got your new Retroid Pocket 3 Plus, you've turned it on, and you're looking at a screen that looks like this, and you don't know what to do? Welcome to my Retroid Pocket 3 Plus complete setup guide. Now here, obviously, your first step is to choose your language, whatever that is. It's English for me. Once you choose your language, the next step is to set up your Wi-Fi network because, well, you're going to need Wi-Fi to finish this. Surprise, surprise, my network is named Milner. So go ahead and click on the name of your preferred Wi-Fi network and then enter in your passcode and away you go. Next, you'll have to set your time zone, either the one you're in or the one you want your Retroid Pocket 3 Plus to think you're in. For me, I'm just going to go ahead and choose Eastern Time in the U.S. You don't have to enable Google Play services, but I recommend you do at least here in the setup phase. You can always disable them later. Then the real fun begins where you choose which apps to pre-install. I recommend installing everything. Again, you can always uninstall it later. But of course, if there's something you know you don't want, then, you know, don't tick that box. Depending on how many apps you chose, it may take a few minutes to install them, and then you're going to get to choose your launcher. I certainly recommend starting with the RP3 Plus launcher rather than the basic Android launcher. So go ahead and choose that, and I'll get you configured with a simple setup for that launcher. So here we are, and it looks kind of plain, right? Just, uh, we got nothing to do. So let's fix that. Click down here on Systems, and then select a few systems that you know you want to play. I'm just going to choose a few as examples so that you can see what it looks like. You can always add more later, but once you've got a few selected, you can click down here on OK, and your screen will now be populated with some graphics for the systems that you select. But of course, when you click on them, there's nothing there to play yet. That's a problem. We'll need to fix that, right? The Retroid Pocket 3 Plus does include 128 gigabytes of internal memory, but I'm going to add a 512 gigabyte memory card and you install that right here. Just pop open the door and then press the memory card in with your finger until you hear a nice little click. Android should actually go ahead and populate this with some file structure and folders. So let's go into our settings, go to storage, and check to make sure that our card is there. And there it is. So now we're ready to install a ton of games. You could remove the memory card and insert it in your computer, but I prefer to just connect the included USB cable. Then you choose file transfer on the screen, and then you should see the Retroid Pocket 3 Plus on your file manager on your computer. And I will go ahead and transfer over some games. Now that that's done, we're ready to continue the setup. Now, although Retroid does include an automatic configuration tool for RetroArch, I think it's a good idea for you to get a little familiar with it. So go ahead and click RetroArch 64, give it permissions, and then let me take you through installing cores. In RetroArch terms, cores are the emulators that you will use to play various games. So select Online Updater, and then core downloader and at that point you will be presented with a list of all the cores that retroarch 64 supports for some systems there will only be one core while for others there may be many and i want you to be familiar with this screen because over time new cores may be released or updated and i want you to feel comfortable being able to choose them on your own i will go ahead and install a few of the cores that i recommend but there will be a complete list later on in the video. For now, I just want you to see what it looks like to install a core, but I will note here, it's important to install any core you want to use before you try to launch a game from a launcher. If you launch a game and you don't have the correct core already installed, RetroArch 64 will just give you a black screen and you may be confused why nothing's working. But enough of that for now. After you've installed your cores, hop out and go into Google Play. You'll need to sign in or sign up, and then I recommend a few applications from the Google Play Store. Probably the most important of these is an emulator called Drastic. Now, it is a paid emulator, but it's really the only way you're going to play Nintendo DS games at good speed. So if you want to play DS, you're going to want to get this app. The next two are optional, but personally, I recommend them. 
The first is Yaba Senshiro 2 Pro. You can use the free version to play Sega Saturn games, but it's kind of a nuisance. So if you like Saturn, pick this one up. The other is Mupin 64 Plus FZ Pro. And again, there is a free version that's included with your Retroid Pocket 3 Plus, but it's always good to support these developers when we can. And the final recommendation I have for you from the Play Store is a front end called Digest Show. I really like it. It's not required, but I do think it really helps unlock some of the potential of the Retroid Pocket 3 Plus. However, I'll talk about that a little later. For now, we're basically ready to play any of the games that run with a RetroArch core. So hop back into the Retroid launcher. And the last step is just to tell the system where we placed our ROM files. Retroid is nice and they do include an option to automatically set up some folders for you, but I prefer to have a greater level of control. And to do that, I'll click here on NES, click ROMs, and then I'll point the system to exactly where I've placed my NES ROMs. Once you've found the folder where you put the ROM files for that system, just tick the box and then click the select button down in the corner. Then just click scan and your Retroid Pocket 3 Plus will start scanning that folder for games. Not only that, but it'll also start downloading box art for all the games it finds, which is pretty convenient. Of course, depending on how many games you've added, it could take a while to scan and download box art for all of them. But at this point, you could just go ahead and click a game to launch it. Here we are in Contra for the NES, and you can just go ahead and click this little button in the bottom right corner to hide the on-screen controls if you want. Hopefully now you feel knowledgeable enough to set up all of your other systems that run using RetroArch. The process will be exactly the same. You just want to make sure that you've installed the correct cores and then you can launch them from the Retroid Pocket 3 Plus launcher. With that said, there are going to be several standalone emulators that you're probably going to want and to use. And Retroid will automatically set up a few of those if you just click those options. However, some of them you're going to have to set up yourself. Even if you click the PPSSPP option, it's going to take you here and you're going to have to tell it where you've put your PSP ROMs. First, you'll want to point it to that general folder to give PPSSPP access to the directories. And from there, after you give it access and click OK, you'll also want to browse for your games and make sure it knows that this is the folder where you keep your PSP ROMs at which point it will scan them in and you'll see them there. And you'll find that that process is pretty similar across most of the standalone emulators you'll be using. For example, Java Senshiro 2, you will also need to give it access to your ROMs folder. And again, much like PPSSPP, it will go ahead and scan in the games that it finds in that folder and display them for you. And if you want to play N64 games, Mupin 64 Plus FZ works in basically the same way. The important thing to remember here is that for most of these systems, unless you've opened the standalone emulator and given them access to the appropriate ROMs folder, if you try to launch a game later from the launcher, it just won't work. So before you start using your launcher, be sure to set up each standalone emulator and you'll be good to go. Some emulators do require BIOS files to work properly. All of those that use RetroArch just go in the internal memory, RetroArch system folder. But for standalone emulators, you're usually going to need to import the BIOS like I'm doing here for the PlayStation emulator DuckStation. So if you encounter a situation where your game isn't launching properly, it may be because you forgot to set up the BIOS. One other quick thing to mention, I see a lot of people asking about the white bar on the right side and how to get rid of it. This is what you do. Just swipe down from the top and click floating icon to turn it off. No more white bar. And now you should be ready to start gaming using the Retroid Pocket 3 Plus launcher. But I do want to recommend that you give Digest Show a try. It's both an emulator front end and also a home screen replacement, and you can get it for free 
from the Google Play Store. And in this next section of the guide, I will take you through setting that up and show you some of its key features to explain why I recommend it. Once you've opened Digest Show, you're immediately presented with the option to download platforms. So go ahead and click that button and then tick the boxes for any system that you want to play. And when you've got them all selected, just go ahead and click import at the bottom. The default theme may be missing artwork for a lot of the supported systems, but we can fix that. Head over to settings and first I'm going to change to the dark theme. I'm a dark theme sort of guy. And then I'm going to turn off that awful beeping sound when I click on things. Okay, that's much better. From there, you can go up and choose Download Platform Wallpaper Packs. BB1 Dark and Alec Full NX are two of my favorites, but of course, feel free to try them out. And now you should immediately see some artwork that looks familiar if you've watched my other videos. One thing I like about Digest Show is that it does support a lot more platforms than the default launcher. Adding ROMs is really straightforward. Just find the system, click Paths, and go in and add your ROM folder for that system. Once you've found it, just go ahead and click Use Folder, allow the permission, and then click Finish. Now you just want to click Sync, and Digest Show will start scanning in those files. It will also automatically choose an emulator to launch these games, but you can click the icon down here in the right and change that if you want to. And perhaps something that's more important to me, if you go to an individual game, you can also customize a specific core or emulator for just that game. I think that's important because as you will see in my recommendations later in the video, there are some systems where I recommend two cores or two emulators. And of course, Digest Show also automatically scans in screenshots and box art for your game collection. Another convenient feature of Digest Show is its ability to set up widgets, some of which include activity widgets so you can continue games, random play widgets to help you try new games, or of course, you can also set up your favorite RSS feeds so that you can see them right from your front end. The Highlights tab gives you several features including recently played games either across your entire collection or by individual system. You can also see your favorites across all the systems or individually, as well as newly added games in the same way. You also maintain convenient access to all of your apps over here in the Apps tab. So do give Digest Show a try. I really think it opens up a lot of extra possibilities with the Retroid Pocket 3 Plus. And if you end up liking it, you can go into Settings, Apps and Notifications, and you can choose to make it your home app. Once you do that, your Retroid Pocket 3 Plus will actually launch into Digest Show when you turn it on. And if you double click the home button from an emulator, it will just come back to Digest Show. Okay, with all that setup out of the way, it's time for emulator and core recommendations. For the Nintendo Game Boy, I recommend the Gambate Core. And of course, your ROMs can be zipped. For Game Boy Color, you'll want to use the exact same core and the same settings will work just fine. For Game Boy Advance, I recommend the MGBA RetroArch 64 core and your ROM files can still be stored as zip. For the Nintendo Entertainment System, or NES, I recommend the Messen Core, and as with most of these older systems, ROM files can safely be stored as zip files. The Sega Master System and Sega Game Gear 
both used the Genesis Plus GX core. Their hardware was actually quite similar and ROM files for each one can be stored as zip files. For the Super NES or Super Famicom, I actually recommend two cores. The first for most games is SNES 9X Current. However, there are some hacked games that run well in widescreen on the Super NES, including all Mode 7 games. And for those, I recommend the BS NES HD Beta Core. Of course, all your Super NES games can be stored as zip files. When it comes to the Sega Genesis or Mega Drive, I also recommend two cores. For most games, you will want to use Genesis Plus GX. Surprisingly, there are actually many Genesis games that look great in widescreen, even without any hacks. And for those, you need to use the Genesis Plus GX Wide Core. Genesis games can be stored as zip files. As with the Genesis for most Sega CD or Mega CD games, you'll want to use Genesis Plus GX. However, now I would suggest storing those games as CHD files. That stands for Compressed Hunk of Data. And I will link to the software to convert your games in the description. And yet again, some Sega CD games look absolutely beautiful in widescreen, and for those, you will want to use the Genesis Plus GX Wide Core. Sega CD games also require a BIOS file. There are three different files depending on the region, and they go in the internal memory in the RetroArch system folder. The 32X is a bit different in that it needs the Pico Drive Core for RetroArch 64. However, the games can be stored as zip. For TurboGrafx-16 or PC Engine games, you'll want the Beetle PCE Fast Core and your games can be stored as zip. Turbo Graphics or PC Engine CD games will use the same core. However, I recommend you store those games as CHD files, like the Sega CD, and you'll need a BIOS file, which is syscard3.pce, placed in the internal memory in the RetroArch system folder. And finally, for most of your arcade needs, whether it's classic stuff like Asteroids or more modern stuff, I recommend the Final Burn Neo Core in RetroArch 64. It will play almost all of the arcade games that the Retroid Pocket 3 Plus supports, including Mortal Kombat 2 or your Capcom CPS 1, 2, and 3 games, as well as all of the Neo Geo library those games can all be stored as zip files. Moving on to the systems which I recommend a standalone emulator for, we'll start with the Nintendo 64, which uses M64 Plus FZ, or the Pro version, and the ROMs can be stored as zip files. For most of these standalone emulators, I will also be going back through and doing full settings and customization guides, so be on the lookout for those. If you want to play Sega Saturn, you're going to need the Yaba Senshiro 2 or Pro version of that emulator. 
and you can store those games as CHD files to save space. For PlayStation, I highly recommend the Duck Station emulator with your games again stored as CHD files. I keep my PlayStation BIOS in the internal memory Duck Station BIOS folder, and you can import whichever one you want. The naming convention shouldn't matter much. If you want to play Nintendo DS on your Retro Pocket 3 Plus, really your only option is a paid app called Drastic. It's well worth the money and it has a lot of customization options, which I will get into when I do my settings guide for the Nintendo DS. Your games can of course be stored as zip files. If you're intent on playing 3DS, and some games do work well, you'll want the Citra MMJ emulator, and your ROMs are probably going to be 3DS files. PlayStation Portable games play fantastic now on the Retroid Pocket 3 Plus, and you're going to want PPSSPP to play those games. To save some storage space, you can compress your PSP ISOs as CSOs. For Sega Dreamcast, I recommend two emulators. ReDream should now play all Dreamcast games at full speed. However, there are some games which have widescreen options in Flycast, but not ReDream. One of those is Marvel vs. Capcom 2. So I also recommend you have that emulator, and those games can be stored as CHDs with the BIOS being optional for Dreamcast. GameCube games generally play best in Dolphin MMJR. And if you have any GameCube ISOs, you can actually use the Dolphin emulator itself to compress them to RVZ files to save space. comes to Sony PlayStation 2 games, your only real option is Ether SX2, and your games can be stored as ISOs. The BIOS is required for PlayStation 2, but you just select it to import it from inside the emulator. And my final standalone emulator recommendation is for the Nintendo Wii, and in this case, I recommend you keep Dolphin, MMJR, and MMJR2, because I found some games work better in one, and some work better in the other. So this is definitely one system I will be making a dedicated settings guide for. Your games can be ISO or WMBF, which may have had some of the data cut out of it. And that'll do it for my Retroid Pocket 3 Plus setup guide. It was definitely a labor of love, so I hope you enjoyed it and you found it useful. And if you did, I do hope you'll subscribe, especially so that you get an update when I post those individual settings guides for the harder to emulate systems. I should start posting some of those to my channel starting next week, so you'll definitely wanna check back soon. But now I think it's time for you to use this guide to get started 
playing your Retroid Pocket 3 Plus so that you can keep gaming.